Hello. Welcome back. We're back. Yes. Back. <laughs> she wants to play too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Top of the round. Kane. Top of the moment. All right. You're down. Down in the immediate lower level, looking up at uh, a big, gross, demony guy who just appeared. Hit Harriet pretty hard with, uh, with his great axe. Gigantic great axe. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Where is the. Is there like a little like hatch out the side to get back out to the deck? Right. Or out from from like it's back in here. Yeah, I can't see where you're doing. Like back here behind. Yeah. Oh, uh, like, kinda like, sure. Yeah. Since I'm underneath, kind of like run out and then try to. Why come not? Out. Sure. All right. <laughs> um. So I'm going to do that. Then try to run up and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Flank, flank stab this dude. Okay. I really like this shadow bow that I could just. To take away at will. <laughs> Thanks, character class. It's cool. She's so mad at you right now. <laughs> she yeah. hates you right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here it came up. Yeah. Yeah. Can you kissy? Can you kissy? No, she's mad at you. She's too mad at me. <laughs> 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 okay. Let's go, Jess. <laughs> Too much fun. Too much fun. Okay. All right. Yes. Um, do you have an ally within five feet? So you get a yeah, sneak so attack damages. Assuming mm. that you hit. That's good old damages. Now, are are you are you moving up and flanking? Yeah. Okay. Advantage. Oh boy. Yeah. I lose a little bit of. Actually, you know what? Can I point blank fire with the bow and get? Uh, and get I'm pretty sure that it's be a melee that is disadvantage if you're firing okay. in melee combat. Like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we'll. Yeah. I mean, you would get sneak attack though. damage anyway, so it could be a straight roll if you wanted to do that. No, I'm trying to... Trying to see if you no. crit. <laughs> Better chance is a crit. <laughs> Try. Um, no, I'm thinking about... You know what? Screw that. I'm going to stay down here. Okay. I see. And I can see through the camera, so yeah, we're good. Well, that would still be firing into melee, wouldn't it? No, no, like, that's only if they're within five feet of you. Range. Oh, okay. You're good at, at All right. there, yeah. So I'm going to try to sharpshooter. You took sharpshooter? Else. I took sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah! If you're ranged and you don't take sharpshooter... Is that minus five plus ten? What are you doing? Sharpshooter's yeah, broken. Minus, <laughs> minus, five to, <laughs> minus five to the attack, plus ten to the damage. Okay. And that's just, uh, there's no advantage to this, right? There would not be advantage to this. All right. Correct. Because there's not really anywhere to hide first. Nope. Wait, what is it? Um, so, with the sharpshooter, that would ne- make my roll a negative two. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, no. I rolled a three. No, no, no. No way. <laughs> I mean, if well, you, if you want the, the actual... I'm sure it doesn't hit if you have, if you're starting before you add anything to it at a minus <laughs> at a minus two. It's just no you don't have the bonus to get to that. To the, uh, these things have thick hide. It's a whole character sheet. All right, well. <laughs> ah, Quetzal. All right, so I gotta do a con save. To wake up. Yes. Last to get plus three because I'm in this aura. Yes. Don't forget, Krishna, on your turn, you have the luck die, which is a D8. Mm-hmm. Uh, D10. D10 now. It went up. I think nice. so. Sweet. <laughs> is, that, is that a one? So, 18 total. Ah, oh, it's so close. 
It's uh, it's hard, man. Okay. Let's see. When you were picked <laughs> Frank, up, luck me. <laughs> Can't give, hear you. Give me a serendipity roll, actually, because you were picked up kind of uh, not gently, gracefully, or gently. Seventy-one. Seventy-one. Mm. Okay, your ammo stays on, but. You know, it is kind of dangling down. Not that anyone can see it. <laughs> but Krishna. Alright, so I'll roll a die training conjunction. Here, let me let me double check it before you do it. Yeah, I don't remember when it goes up. I think it's actually level nine that it goes up again. Yeah, because it went up. It's 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 been a D eight for a couple of levels now. Well, that's where it went up then. Check your uh, the table. All right, meow. Yeah. Okay, John Wick. There he is. All right. There he is. Uh, I think it would be fun to do like a like a one shot with like one one person playing a level twenty three master. And just like having run around and just John Wick the whole place would be amazing. Just have a, like people basically like CR half. Yeah. Ah, just, just like red. level ten. The luck die increases D eight at level five, D ten at ten. Okay, oh, so it's a D eight and D twelve at fifteen. Nice. So eight. Yeah. That still it should should help unless you roll a one <laughs> on yeah. some of those. So the one fucker. Oh, well, I can choose to do it. Like, he can roll it, and then I can... That's true. Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's 18 plus 4, 22. 22. Oh, nice. Okay. So would I have the insight to yank this angle off? Give me an insight check. Could I just tell him? Because I'm uh, right next to him? Because if this has happened second by second, I just whispered to his ear, gotta get up, kick some ass, and then I did my arcana check. You did. So, I will say... For that, yes, that you can tell him that he needs to take that off. Take that shit off. Wow. We'll he, call that. Uh, <laughs> your head just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh shit! It's like in Vegas. We'll call that, like, all a in Vegas. Action. Yeah. Now, you take it off. You're technically still attuned to it, but no, you have to be wearing it for that to stay. So, you take it off. You lose the armor, the like amulet of uh, protection bonus thing what that it gives you. Your but Drowsiness just is gone. Excellent. Yeah. No sleepy, no mo. I took a pill to <laughs> cure my ills. Um, so now, so I have to use my action to stand up. No, half your movement to stand up. Oh, sweet. Stand up and stab that motherfucker. Then. Uh, okay, that will be a disadvantage. Really not in here. Um, nice. 21. 21 will hit. I can't tell if he's standing in the lane. Alright, so. I don't know which one's his. Fire damage. Is that him back there? Speaking yeah, of, he's oh, like tucked in there. I'm gonna cast a level. He's probably still standing. He is. Level 3 smite. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Yahtzee. Dang. That's why we need you up. Those tasty damages. No, sorry. Holy crap. 30 plus 5. 35. Ooh. 35. <laughs> Yeah, so you you slash and you you feel resistance when you hit this thing. Um, and you see like a spray of like green greenish blood hit the deck. Uh, it's not invisible, funnily enough. And yeah, it's a good hit. You try to have more than one attack. Yeah, so disadvantage, see what you got. Um, yeah, 20, nice. 22. Dang. All right. I mean, his first was a 17 and a 13 and a 15 and a 14. We're going to hit him with another level 3 smite. Okay, burn him up. Oh, just smoke him got him. Taste the damages. Is that better? About the same? 30 points. 30 total? Dude. That's crazy. Teach you, son. Came to the wrong boat, I say. <laughs> right? 
Uh, wow, that's wild. Clink. Good job. Are you moving? You have half so your unconscious, so. covered in a bunch of green blood. Essentially. Invisible green blood. Um, I did not make you roll to see if you hit Quetzal. Because the way that he's being held is too high for you to really reach with your sword anyway. Nice. Like, so he's not invisible anymore. Is he holding like no, he's still, he's still invisible. <laughs> okay. But I see where all the blood was. Yes. You yeah. see him strike, and he hits something, and you hear uh, some swearing in... what? Well, what you assume to be some kind of swearing in a language you probably don't understand. Um... When, when do you go? When, when's your turn? Not till later. Yeah. Who, who's after me? Here you go. Who has a nice, visible, solid target? Um. <laughs> Just smash with her hammer. Oh shit. Yeah. It's tricksy. Roll well, off your table. Like your, your random table. <laughs> I could. I could. Oh no, but that might do a fireball on the black nah, dag, and it would kill everything. Get screwed. Wow. <laughs> do it. I'm hey. resistant to fire. Whatever you want to do, man. I mate. mean, <laughs> just do it, man. Go nuts. Give it a shot. Okay, okay fuck it. Let's Leaders. do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the sky still, right? Huh? We're in the sky. We're flying. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're unconscious. It's all right. You came up here to save us. You're welcome. Oh, you're <laughs> um, then Which, I'll by win. the way, is amazing that you, that she even made it this high. Like, you guys are pretty high up. Yeah. The fact that she so she bad. she like reached this height is ridiculous. It's only because of the like stupid high strength of the huge. Elephant. Now, so okay, we'll we'll cross that bridge when I get there. Because let's see, I can use one luck point to roll a d10 to see what's on there. Would I have to use two to be able to hit it because it's invisible? I'm guessing. Not necessarily. It depends on what the spell is. Okay. I so guess you're right, because if it's hitting a huge it radius... It you just, just one, one point to, mm-hmm. to do it? Okay. To roll off of it. Alright. This is that magic one that can get, like, super ridiculous. The will of the wild. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright. Roll that d10. One. Okay, what is one? One d6. Flumpus. F-L-U. Flumps. Flumps? Yeah. Controlled by the DM appear on an un- unoccupied space within <laughs> 60 feet of you. They are friendly towards you and vanish after one minute. I love it. Roll a d6 for me. Oh my gosh, I gotta look up plumps now. They are like <laughs> super weak and <laughs> dumb. They're like I love four. It. <laughs> four. Huh? Four. Four of them. Okay. So you just summon some useless, useless creatures. <laughs> well, I make them jump on the invisible thing. Distraction. Get in their eyes. They're, they're controlled by me. Yeah, wow. he controls them. Uh. <laughs> I'll show you what a flump is. And uh, I think you'll be amused by them, I think. I hope, anyway. Where are you? This book is falling apart. Yeah, Okay. Here is what they look like. Oh, look at them! <laughs> they're little cute, derpy squid things. It's like Squid Dad. Octodad. They are small. 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 And we'll say that they go on your... Uh, on your initiative count. So we'll say that they actually go, like, right now. There's a lot of shit they could have been... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A one is 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 an unfortunate uh, <laughs> bad luck. Like, there's another table I could have done. I'm glad I did because everything just was gonna kill every, all of us. <laughs> you guys, oh, what level is that one? Uh, wow, win of the wild. All right, level six, level nine. Well, okay, it's even so more level. You can't even catch that. No. On, on that yet. That's the one that has. The yeah, that's the one that has meteor swarm, lightning bolt, fireball level nice. five. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah. Magic it's, missile level yeah. five. The thing is, for that one to get meteor swarm, you have to roll a ten, 
And then plus, you have to roll like 97 to 100. Could you imagine? Oh, dice to get it. oh my god, like whatever so we're like, fighting. It's not impossible, but it's like it might happen. Once it can't at some point. Once I hit level game, but Yeah, once I hit level nine, that's that's all I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not, it's not just, man, that's great. Yeah. Are you gonna uh, pop it out these things or <laughs> So I'm not even gonna bother with like placing them because they have like seven hit points. Uh, but they kind of spawn, and they're like, one, number one, they're really confused as to how they got there. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're just kind of uh, floating around. They can't speak or anything like that. Um, they do have telepathy, actually. So it's, you hear kind of thoughts, thoughts from, like, from you, or to you, rather. Uh, Are they hostile to them? No. Really? No, they're just hanging out. Say, where are we? <laughs> you mean deception check? <laughs> With disadvantage, because there's a great big demon thing. <laughs> we can't see it's invisible. No, one of them is visible. Uh, Nine. Nine. Yeah. Like, no. Oh, did I say heaven? I meant you're you're here. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Um, my goodness, they would have to roll stupidly high to see if they can even hit anything. Um, they float over because they kind of assume that the big leathery winged demon thing is evil. They just kind of float over and try to um, hit it with tendrils. Well, they could also, I mean, if they're t- telepathic, they could, like, be shouting your llama to it, and it's, and it's, and it's ah, brain right yeah. now. <laughs> like, uh, uh, vicious mockery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. There's four of them, right? Yep. You have one, one melee attack. What is that? Oh, my gosh. That actually hits. <laughs> that hits, too. Nice. No way. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's just two, two of them. Yeah, it's damn. That blows my mind. <laughs> they do 1d4 plus 2. Here, I'll, I'll roll it. Okay. Take that, Bethany. That is 4, 5, six, eight, ten. Damage. 10 damage. 10 damage? In total. Nice. <laughs> Wasn't useless. Thank you, Squishy Bros. That is great. And they're like, kind of freaked out. I love that. That's very, that's very funny to me. Uh, Harriet, mm. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to do? By the way, um, the move anything? So they still have you. I can't really do anything there. Nope. Okay. Finger guns. Love it. it. Starting a robot. Mm. Love it. Love it. Love it. Harriet. What do I do? This sort of easy choice. Is to bonk them. Bonk them with your hammer. Pick it up, bonk, bonk, bonk them. And you can see them now, so you can do. Let's do that. Uh, hundred. So invisibility war off one of them. You don't have to. You just do more damage if you do. What? Invisibility war off on one of them. This one. Yeah, because yeah, it attacked uh, Harry. So once it attacks, it yeah. Gives Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's. Talk it okay. Boop them. You're gonna use Popeye. As well? Yeah. Okay. So, let's D20. see. It. Do yep. I get two since, or just one? Um, if you use Popeye to distract instead of doing damage, then you would roll two. Because you would have advantage. Up to you, of course. Yeah. Hmm. But then he could also attack, right? Not if he's doing the distraction thing. But, so it's, he, he, right, so he can either distract or he can do... Yes. So I can, so I would have two actions and then he would have an action, or... Yeah, so you you have two attacks, independently of him. And then he would have an attack. He would have an attack, or if you want him to use the help action, which is kind of what that is, um, that's a little bit. So he can help you by distracting it, and you would get an let me attack twice and have him attack. Okay, let's do it. 
17 plus Okay, great, things. that hits. Okay, next. That's a three. Which would be 12 total, and that does not hit. Okay, okay. and next. then Pop, I got a 20. Yeah, let's let's get your attack rolls. Okay. You don't have Hunter's Mark and your Maul Does your Maul do thunder damage now? I think so. I don't remember. I believe so. Did did didn't I do that? Get, I don't remember. It's with like a deafening crack. I want to say that you got that enchanted for a minute. Whose weapon was that? I got one enchanted. Uh, oh, an axe that does ice damage. That's okay. Wow, I was thinking. I want my in contest. I was thinking that you have one. Also, uh, fine. Either way, just give it to her. Self healing. She has it. <laughs> oh, she got it in the forest. I'll have to go back and look because I don't remember. But roll me. For the mall it is two d six plus four plus six. Oh, sorry, plus six. Nine plus six. Nine plus six. Very 15. good. Fifteen. Great. Okay. And then Popeyes. Yep. Nice. What does he do? He bites the most useless character plus. this session. <laughs> He'll actually be doing 2d4 and he's bigger. Like, oh, gotcha. This is the oh, worst. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just feel like, well, we'll check out again. So I've been the most useless, useless character this entire session. <laughs> I've been unconscious the whole time. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Make easier DCs. <laughs> it's what designed is, to be very hard. What is a brutal So DC? that's the one. Yeah, for a concept. Okay. <laughs> And that's a four. I Did you roll to see if you hit? I mean, I got a, only got out of it because of Yeah, technicality. that was the 20. Oh, that's right, the next 20. Okay. Oh, right. So it's one and four? Yes, one and four plus... So that is... Six. So... Five plus six is 11, plus eight is 19. Because it's a crit. And you do maximum dice damage. Good. On top of that, so 19. Woo! Popeye rips a big old chunk out of that demon. That's crazy. Like it. I like it. Their turn. Okay. Come One. Me, huh? Come back, me, bro. Well. Um, <laughs> you actually hear the flapping begin to diminish. And it's less. Harder to discern exactly what it is. Because well, you don't have your thing active, do you? You didn't reactivate it. Um, <laughs> I, an I haven't reactivated it. Let me okay. see. That's all. Yeah, until the end of your next turn. Yep. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. Did they take me? Did they take yeah, me so away? at the end of the next turn. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the one that's visible is going to continue to attack. Disadvantage because blurry. Nope. And that'll be 13, so no. Big O negatory. Good to go. Your turn. Is, it, is that what was down there? I don't know how it got there. I dropped it and uh, I said, F it. No. <laughs> Yeah. Hi. Um, sleeping Bob. So, the one that grabbed Bob is still invisible. Yes. The one that's up on the front is still visible and quite damaged, I must say. All right. Let's see if we can uh, try this again. Okay. Uh, but you're wondering how I got myself into this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Record strategy. <laughs> yep, that's me. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm sticking to my guns. Okay. Or bows in this situation. I understand. Sharpshooter. That's better. 
That's not great. Uh, nah, that's probably not gonna hit. Uh, like sharpshooter. <laughs> yeah, sharpshooter makes that a fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen does not hit. Sorry. I miss again. Yeah. I was aiming for the base base of the the neck, and it just. I will tell you this. Um, it hasn't really come up. It's not relevant to whether you know or not. Uh, but it's the armor class is eighteen. Okay. Maybe uh, consider the minus five business. Yeah. Up to you. No but worries. The it's reasonable. <laughs> but the sweet, sweet damages. I know. I know. I mean, I would have hit that time. Quetzal. All right. Do you notice where you are? Am I still within aura range? Still within what? Aura range? No. No, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you like way off somewhere else from the Oh, dungeon? Come on. I'm not the fuck out. <laughs> that was a 12. Um, give me, because of Jocelyn, give me another stranger of your roll. Please. Wake <laughs> <My God. laughs> up. 76. Ooh. Okay. Um, through the through the jostling movement of flight. Uh, well, first the question: the amulet that you wear that gives you that protection mm-hmm. is it exposed? The problem, or yeah. Is um, it tucked? tucked? Yeah. No, I I have it out for the world to see. I, I want people to know in the culture okay. of this. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. I don't care. I'm not hiding it. So through. Serendipitous luck. The amulet falls free from you. And we'll actually call that for this turn. So you find yourself awake and you can't see yourself, for one. You're being held by something that's very big and a little prickly. And when you look down, there's forest treetops. Well, that's fine with me. And kind of off to the side you see uh, the ship. Now, your amulet falls into the forest. Who knows where it landed. Okay. Probably going to be stuck in like a, a high branch on one of the trees nearby. So the sort of amulet protection bonus is gone. Well, that's fine. But you're awake and you have your action and movement and bonus action. Okay. Uh, I will say that you're grappled, though. Okay, so I just have to break your grapple. Stab him yes. in the throat. You would use your action to break the grapple. He's not okay. expecting it either. Stab him in the throat. Yeah. That would be opposed strength check. That's going to be rough. Although my strength is pretty big. You're pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. He's a small bird. Oh, wait. Can I rage? Yes. Bonus action to rage. Then I can't fly. It's your action to break the grapple. I mean, it probably took a little bit more. How high on the air? Uh, at this point, because you guys are like 130 feet up above the tree line, so maybe 200 feet. How fast do I fall? Pretty fast. Would I hit the ground before my next turn? Probably so. Okay, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna rage. <laughs> Uh, I'll go ahead and try to break the grapple. Okay. Come Opposed on. strength. Come on. Just, 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 come on. Just roll for me, please. Twelve. Need some new dice. Dude, I got a thirteen. <laughs> what point? Ah. Oh, mm-hmm. What point? He's out of range for you to do that. Is he? Yeah. It's Thirty feet, right? Yeah. He is sixty feet out from the ship. Should be move oh. that one home, homeboy that's on the ship. The one fiend. Well. So that was your action. Uh, bonus uh, action. So really, I'm gonna like, go ahead and cast law. This is probably more realistic because. Yes. Why not? I can't move anymore. But okay. I can still be. Yep. In flight. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop touching things and break. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> Good deal. Flying in his arms. Krishna. 
If I hear him flying away, would I? Be, you can would uh, I imagine that they would be he would be flying away. Yeah, above. You can definitely hear the wing sound because he, he's got like they got big wings. Oh, so I also like, yell, help! Yeah, <laughs> you can definitely. Okay, Here fair enough. Yelling. So, <laughs> Questwell apparently has come to you and he's calling out, but you can definitely tell that he is off the side of the ship. Yeah. So, could I move towards his call, or I could? Um, he's heading. I'll, I will give you this much. Based on his voice, he's definitely heading in the in the direction of the hand of the ancient. Okay, I'm going to fly the ship, mentally command the ship to fly straight straight at him. Okay. As your action? Yes. Yeah, okay. the fuckers have to. So, um, and because of the magic of the ship, there isn't super quantities of jostling. The ship turns fairly quickly and begins to move in that direction. And you can like, you can catch up, essentially. I want, hit, I want to hit the demon. Can you take your existing song? If logically the demon's flying away, I'll hit him in the back. Okay. Okay. And I know that Bob can fly, so... Yes. Give me... a... Okay. First of all, give me a serendipity roll. Because you don't know where this dude really is. You, you right. heard an approximate location. Yeah. But we got to see if the ship, like, west past or actually hits or. Forty-five. Forty-five is not great. Um. It just rams into me. <laughs> so. You fly in that direction, and you don't get a direct hit at all. Uh, but you can definitely hear like scraping along the side uh, where you've kind of clipped the demon thing. Um, <clears throat> roll for me because I'm not going to make you roll to hit with the ship because it's weird. This is just a big ass ship. Yeah. Um, roll me 3d6. Nine. Nine. Okay. So, big guy will take five. Oh, Quetzal bad. will take four. That's, I got plenty. It's not bad. Could have been much worse. Down, <laughs> down the <laughs> If that struck him, then, then maybe the demons jostled him. Bob will have more of an advantage okay. to wrestle away. That, that can force another opposed strength check, if you'd like. Yes, of course I'd like. I don't know what that is. I, I like that idea. I'm going to use the idea. green one. Huh? I'm going to use the green die. Okay. Uh, 15. 12. Hey! No! Hey so you... I'm clean! Miraculously, almost, when the sort of flying demon is hit, um, it's such a surprise to the demon thing that his, his grip loosens a little bit and you're able to kind of, like... Flex and bust out. Push your say, yeah, flex and bust. <laughs> uh, that's very funny. All right. But you're free and you're up, and the medallion's not on you anymore, so you're good to go there. Uh, very good. As a, so that was an action. I apologize. That was an action. So I'm no so longer action. Could I put Hunter's mark on this guy? A uh, flying one. I'm no longer oh, invisible. Right? Invisible. Yeah, you can. Sweet. So you'll do an energy. Are you still passed out? No, I'm awake now. I'm, I'm visible now too, right? Mm, once you broke free, yeah, because you're no longer like a part of, yeah, cool. yeah. He appears, kind of f floating up above the ship. Uh, now the ship's moving pretty good, so he's kind of still stationary. But you're like, <laughs> go past. Handbrake turn. <laughs> you're you're just flying up there right now. What's up? Yeah. You want to move? Um, I don't think so. I think I can just run, go to that guy uh, okay. on the next turn. Very good. Clank. So you're flying. You saw the amulet on? Nope. Okay. It's in the woods. Good deal. Probably on a bear. And there's a... Is that thing still alive over there? Mm -hmm. Yep, this one is. And the one is floating somewhere, but you can't see it. All right. I am going yep. to... Here it's all in his business. I'm going to convince the 
shoot mass, magic missile at the thing in front of me. Is it visible? This yes. one? No, this one's visible. Yeah, you can see it. I can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then yeah. Magic missile, that motherfucker. Move, move you and the demon closer to the boat. Like, kind of adjacent to the side. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> it's a fiend, technically, but... It's a lot of twos in there. Oh, twos. Four, eight, twelve... Uh, twenty... One. Nice. Really? And I curse its name. <laughs> Good job. Now that is 12 total of your 30 turns? That is 12 of my 30. Cool. Harriet. Mm. You see a bunch of little missiles of force fly in all anime style. And just hit this thing in front of you. It growls. The thing in front of, yeah. Looks at you menacingly. Papa just doesn't give two shits and is ready to go and kill more bites. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright. Let's do it. Let's do that. Bonk it. So I get two? Yeah, you get two and he gets one. That's a 16. Okay. Plus. Plus things will hit, for sure. That's a 10. Plus nine will hit, yes. Okay. And then for bye bye. And then Popeyes. I got a one. <laughs> oh no! No net 20. Uh, give me that percentile. Oh, don't, don't ever pop. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Is it that one? Those two? Uh, it gets hit by a stray goose. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's right. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight goose. <laughs> <laughs> 42? Ah, okay. That doesn't yeah. sound good. No. The, the <clears throat> Mechaloth thing will use its reaction to attack Popeye. Don't I get a hit in though with mine? Yes, you do. Two? One. Two. Mm-hmm. Both of yours hit. And don't forget, you get an extra d4 for each of your attack rolls. So I get three? You're big. Huh? So I get three then? So you get... It's 2d6... So oh, and a d4. And, and, and a d4. Wait a minute. Then how did Popeye... He does 2d4 instead of 1d4. I only rolled one last time. No, you rolled a 1 and a 4, and we doubled them. For Popeye. For Popeye's critical hit. But... Um, so for, for your mall attack, your big hammer attacks, mm-hmm. right? You do 2d6 plus 1d4 plus 6. 11 plus 6. 17, okay. Plus. Yeah. Plus what? Your second attack. Oh, right. That's crazy. That's good damage. Well, that's 5 plus 6. Plus so, 28 damage. 20, yeah. Twenty-eight damages. So this guy will not get to use his reaction he's uh-huh. dead. because he's dead. How yeah. would you like to kill this guy? Yeah. Drink his blood. We're just gonna gobble him off the ship. Yeah, I'm just gonna smash it. Just, like smash, smash his him. face. Yeah. Smash his face. Get, off you the get side. some gore. Yeah, like golf swing him. Let's say you really shanked that one. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That was. I really got a hold of that one. Awesome. Uh, that was really good. Did you move anywhere now that you're free of demon in your face? Was the other one out now or no? No, it's, it's still, invisible. still invisible. But it's pretty much right by where Quetzal is. Can I move over by Quetzal? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Well, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I move closer to the edge. Whack. whack. Also, did the ship continue to move? Yeah. Would that have been uh, like a required conscious effort by him to like keep it going? It's Christian. I know, that's what I said, him. Oh, just like slam? That's fair. I, like, guess, I guess once there was contact made, you could have called it to like slow, uh, which would work. That's fine. Um, 
Yeah, you hit him with Chef. You did nine damage? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Cool. Good deal. I'm going to have some words with this call to madness. <laughs> me too. They, are, are they knock me out as soon as two random creatures turn. show up and attack me? I was thinking the same thing. Oh, they, what, was, what was this all about? It's going to fly up onto the ship. And attack. Who's it going to attack? Uh, <laughs> oh, we gotta go. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh. It is their turn. You want to call it here? Uh, yeah, I mean, if initially what I'm going to keep on doing is shoot magic to make missiles a thing. If they go down, I'm going to try to okay. help them. Uh, okay, fair enough. Then we will we'll finish up. I think, I think we can run the barbarian and the. Yeah. The missile launcher. We're being pretty yeah, here. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and get this ready. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you're going to have to do. Nice. Let me okay. Take, I'm going to take a picture of my character sheet real quick so I can put it on the wall. Yes. Yes, please do. I imported that over last time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will contact. I mean, what? Um, probably be shifting this over to roll 20 at some point. Ah, 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 ah. Can you snatch that? Yeah. Come here. Come here, little poopy head. Okay. Yeah, I gotcha. Now, in the interim, Bubby time! Look. Look at the camera. You see? See right here? <laughs> no. Ah! So squirmy. Can we so squirmy for? Crunchy. You it's hate this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. If I could go, I would just kill things and try to eat it. <laughs> like a true goblin. <laughs> All right. I need, to, need to watch uh, the Goblin Solarian. I made it get, get hype. Oh. That's good, yeah. I mean, it's the opposite of what's supposed to happen to you, but I mean. That's oh. hilarious. Yeah. They are like I mean, eyeballs deep it's in the goblin yogurt. Slayer, but Look at that. It's literally the It's Kikat. It's yogurt all over the face. That sounds neat as hell. Yeah, I made Gerald watch an episode of it. <laughs> It's good. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty. It's pretty fucking I, brutal. I haven't watched any more than that so far. I haven't either. It's Rawr. like I only like watched like the first Rawr. two episodes of it. Rawr. But it's freaking brutal. All right. Like, vicious. I mean, the vicious literally brutal. the main character. He just introduces himself as Goblin Slayer. <laughs> yeah. And that's it's all good. he does with, really in good. his life. Uh, he's probably like he's probably the equivalent yeah. of like a level twelve safe. character that just goes around just murdering goblins. I like that. Oh. All right, later. Bye. Okay. Quail. 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 Let's get this back up and run it. And then we'll... Yeah. Okay. Now, it has a couple of targets. A couple of options to choose from. It wants to go... For one that I think it might need to recover. Let's do a roll and see who it attacks. Okay. One to two. Attacks you. Three to four. Attacks Kane. Five to six. 
an attack as well. So. No one. No one. Okay. Let's have a one. Six. Ah, Quetzal! Quetzal it is. <laughs> Two attacks on Quetzal. <laughs> Does he drop his invisibility? Yeah. Excellent. I will drop his invisibility. Invisibility. That's... Alright. That is what we... Two attacks. What is his armor class? It is... 22. 22? That is what it says. Oh, he probably... He erased it uh, recently, so it's probably 21 since he uh, tossed his little amulet. Yeah, it takes long. Okay. So, 21. You get hit. I mean, it's only going to do half damage. He has a plus two chef's uniform. I don't know what. Yeah, and a shield. Oh right, probably a, like a pot lid or something. Yeah, dumb like that. Yes, that's fourteen. Uh, nineteen reduced down to nine. Is he was he raging? He's raging. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, he's not raging because he flew. He can save nineteen block. damage. Yeah. That turns rage off. Huh? That turns rage off. Can't. Flying. Well, no, he, no, he didn't. He didn't want. He had to, to choose uh, what he wanted to use as bonus action, uh, uh, so he chose flight. Because if he would have fell, he wouldn't have been able to reactivate right. it down before he split. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a big. That's a big <laughs> that would have been unpleasant for him. Hello. Uh, probably about an hour or two. Gets a good hit in now. It's your turn next. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. Out he, down. by the way, is still like or outside just the ship. A big load up I'm just attacking in. I'm on my way home. I have, I have an arrow. He's in melee range of my friend. Yes, he is. I said that I could just come and pick up. Uh, I won't sharpshooter this time. Okay. Because I can pick up really once essentially it lets me just a plus four on my attack. Which means you have to roll a fourteen. Yeah. Or better. Yeah, the odds the odds are not in my favor to. I'd rather keep a plus nine than actually do some damages. Yeah. That's a 19. Ooh, it hits. Yay! Roll that sneak attack damage. First time I've done something useful tonight. <laughs> You've done sneak attack damage before. No, I didn't I didn't do sneak. I uh, just hit hit the guy the once. Oh, that's right, you did. That's true. Krishna did nasty damage to that one. Yeah. Wasn't playing though, around at all. With that, it was clutch disadvantage roll. Yeah, yeah, that was that crazy. Was well, both wild. of them were really good. Yeah. Sometimes luck goes good. Yeah. Sometimes luck goes not so good. Right. Now, I think after this fight, we'll probably there's a couple of little things to do, and then we'll, we'll call it just because you know need more peeps. <clears throat> Why did they have to leave early? Uh, Tommy has to work. He's on a new About schedule. Like he, yeah, seven fifty-five is when his shift starts now. That's crazy. Seven fifty-five to four forty, and he only has off Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Hmm. So he's yeah. got good hours, that's but crappy days off. That's part of why we're moving it to digital because it'll optimize the time. Oh, so we you know, we are officially doing that. I'll I gotta talk to Eli about that. I'm fine with it. I mean, I'm sure Eli would. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 100% fine with it. So. Current doesn't work for him. Yeah. Um, anyway, I roll, let's see, that's 16 plus. I mean, he'll he'll probably have to step out every now and then to do something work-related. 22. 22 damage? Yeah. Nice. Single arrow. Oh, wait. I can attack twice. I forgot about that. You can attack twice. Oh, convenient. That's a natural 20. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, wow. unfortunately, it didn't happen on the the one that had sneak attack damage. Yeah. Cool. That's okay. Would have been gnarly. But, anyway. All right, let's see what you got. Nice. Rolled a 7. 
plus eight. Plus eight. Plus six. Twenty-one. <laughs> so that did almost as much with the uh, sneak attack anyway. I like it. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, so this whole point ain't gonna last long. Quetzal. No, he's looking rough already. Yeah. Quetzal. Um, I guess I'm Quetzal. Sure. Uh, Dive bomb him. Yeah. Spear him in the heart. Um, he's gonna. I think he's gonna do a, like an aerial uh, hot pocket launch at this dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just. He is within melee range. Like flying, he's. He's gonna he's gonna like fl- like do like a mid air tumble. Yeah. Like fling it between his legs. All right. Okay. Yes. Like at him. Blue forty two. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see it. Let's see <laughs> yes. it. Let's see if you hit with it. Hot pocket. It's another twenty on that same die. Wow. You critted on the hot pocket. <laughs> oh, I've been using this die for a while now. Yeah. Nice. Now, as a fiend, it is resistant to fire, so it will be taking half damage. But it's still going to be pretty tasty. I have no idea what his. It's four d six. It's four d six. As of, I think so anyway. Perfect. We'll I already it, had these four for my sneak attack. We'll call it four d six for now. That's pretty good. Uh, that is a 16. 16 damage. Uh, wait, plus 24, because it was a crit. Oh, right. Uh, so... so it's 40. 40. Then half. Divided by 2 is 20. Should've just made it ice. 20 is... Curiously enough... Sufficient. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> so this thing catches a high pocket in the face. It's like him. Uh, and as it's trying to fly back to the ship, he's like knows the guy's going. <laughs> just like pulls one out, does like a midair tumble, like just yeah. flings it out. It's... Oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm Are gonna... you okay? No, no, I just, uh, barely, I just barely hit that. Okay, it looks <laughs> like I hit it much harder than you. Did. <laughs> uh, that's Dunk. good. Yeah, really. I've got a hard head. So it is, uh, it takes it right in the face. And it kind of screams a little bit. The screaming dwindles. And it collapses uh, in midair and plummets. Like a little missile down to hit the ground. Nice. <gasps> nice. Nice. Okay. You have one that is dead on the deck. And the other one sort of hit the ground. Uh, with a, you can hear it from up here too. Like it's, hear a bunch of limbs break, and there's a bit of a crunchy, splatty landing. Doesn't sound very pleasant. Hmm. What would you like to do? Search the body. Search the body. Okay. So we circle the, the boat back around to now find him. Which are both bodies? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, both of them are, fell off the ship, didn't they? No, one sent on the deck. No. Oh. Oh, I thought Harry yeah. uh, uh, blasted well, that probably, thing. Well, probably would want to check both of them just, just in case. That's fair. There is a large great axe. That is, like, large of size. So, none of you can realistically use it. Um, this is the base to get large great eggs. Yeah. Harriet could probably use it right now, but once the enlarged business wears off, yeah. then no, it's too it's too big. Well, it's got a lot of metal in it, so maybe you can sell it for scrap if you want to just keep it. Maybe. Put it uh, on the ship. Yeah, you know, we got space on the ship. Right. Yeah. We we'll probably find a Goliath that needs. We, we, should, we, should, uh, <laughs> we should mount the fiend skulls on the ship. Hey, yeah, we got we got plenty of plenty you of have the space uh, to do that in the hold if you wish. Oh yeah. Um, so now the skull of the first one, neither skull's in great shape. <laughs> I'll tell you that because Harriet smashed. What is the whole creature? The look one like? on the ship, huh? What does the whole creature look like? Was it like a chimera?
Oh, okay, I see. It's like a big green. Yeah, like a gargoyle uh, almost. Yeah, it kind of looks like a gargoyle. That's 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 a fair assessment. Um, you find a little pouch <coughs> on the one on the deck. And like, by the way, to go back to the skull thing, Harriet smashed the one. So, it could probably be mount- mounted still. It just has a nice, sort of, substantial dent in its face. Um, and then the one on the ground it hit quite a few branches on the way down. So it's pretty dinged up, too. Uh, and it's burnt as well. So, you could mount them. They're scary. Yeah, for sure. And graphic. Yeah. <laughs> scary enemies, yep. There you go. All right. I will take that into account. Two. Oh, this is mountain heads. Um. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> In this pouch, you find a note. A clue? What What kind of clue? What languages do you read? Common and Draconic. Not Abyssal, that's for sure. Okay. We're looking at common, avian, and dwarven over here. Gotcha. Clank can't really read anything like that either. Harriet, I'm pretty sure just speaks common. No. Harriet speaks common, Sasquatch, elf, like elvish, and orcish because of your favorite enemies. Yes. Wait, that's why, why Sai can speak Draconic. Mm-hmm. So it's a note that is written in a language that you do not understand. I will tell you that it's very it's a very odd looking script in that the lettering is clearly meant to be kind of jagged looking. But it's written in a hand that you think might be more used to writing Elvish kind of script. So it's mm. kind of flowy in its jaggedness. It's weird. Very strange looking. Um, it's script. clearly not like a native <coughs> speaker. No. Of the language who wrote it. That is it. We'll have to take it and get it read. Yeah. You are. Is the um. Is um, Eli's character traveling with us? No. Corvus left to do deal with something with his uh, patron. Patron, yeah. Zitharun, this Zitharun to Manita, the Sphinx. With a crazy name. You have the note. Is there anything you'd like to do now, this moment? So, you're still, at this point, probably a day on the airship until you get to uh, the hinge. But you're only maybe... away from the clearing where you met Amiris before. So you have a couple of options. You can go straight there. You can... Uh, Amiris is still down. Like, you guys kind of meet up with Amiris when you go down to search that body. Um, he, had, he had kind of already done that and sort of 
presenting you with the same note. It was like almost like a carbon copy of, of the previous note. Slightly different because it was actually handwritten, but two large great axes and two notes that say the same thing. Amiris cannot read it. <laughs> yeah, what um, I forgot why why were we headed to this hinge? The hinge is where the cult of madness. Sort of brought you guys on. Well, then we need to go somewhere to get these notes. I mean, we have time. I was going to say, Cain uh, would probably suggest that it'd be better for us to keep this ship that we have that lets us travel much faster than normal people under wraps. So, like, those people wouldn't expect any of us back, like, for a while because we because they'd probably be assuming that we're still traveling on foot. Whereas this thing can get us t uh, two places and back before. Yeah. Well, they, they, they probably have, I mean, if they sent these fiends after us, they probably have some awareness that the fiends mm -hmm. failed. Um, speaking of which, we should probably, I guess it'd be a good idea to leave the amulets on the ground or some shit. Buried. Well, Quetzal's is up in a tree somewhere. Oh, okay. It'd be, you'd have to roll pretty high to find them. Well, for mine, I want to bury it six feet under the ground. I can roll pretty high. <laughs> okay, give me an investigation check. So you're kind of flying around the airship <coughs> for this thing. It is like a golden chain, so you have that going for you. Okay. That will decrease the DC, but finding it in a, in a, in a you know, canopy of trees yeah. is a challenge. 25. 25. Wow. <laughs> wow. Gains a sharp eye, uh, uh, Goodness gracious. That's what you needed. <laughs> it's like the DC. Yeah. It's 25. Nice. So it probably uh, took us a little bit of looking around, but yeah. finally I was like... Church around for like 40 minutes, maybe. It gets... It starts... It gets to the point where it's frustrating. It's like, man, we're never going to find a stupid thing. And to see, like, a little glint. And then you just see it. It's like, oh, there it is. It's um, stuck on a very high branch. Um, the sort of chain had looped around and caught. And it was just kind of dangling there. So, yeah, you find it. So you want to bury... Bury it deep, deep in the ground. Yeah. Kane, yours technically is fine. Because yeah. you, got, you got the blood alteration thing. Uh, so you could keep it if you wanted to. Why can I have it? Yeah. Up to you. Oh well. Okay. I mean, no, certainly, like, I feel like, because <clears throat> I'm trying to do everything I can to blend. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, the closest place where you absolutely 100% know that a person there could read it would be Sartex City. Which is south of where you are now. So Maybe we need to do that first before going to the hinge. Yeah, okay. It'd be a quick um, couple hours travel down. Um, it's getting to be like afternoonish. Um, we'll say that you kind of park it, so to speak. I, I guess you would shrink it down. Yeah, so we, we would, uh, would want to rest anyway before going back to the hen, so maybe like get the note read, rest, you, and then... Right. You have a few hours of travel before you get to Starlight City anyway, so you can take a short rest there if you felt you needed to. Um, if you want a long rest, it's going to be some time from where you are to get to the hinge anyway. So by the time you get it translated from Starlight City up to the hinge, would be a day. So you have, you have time for a long rest at that point. Sweet. And you've seen a few birds and stuff, but nothing really aggressive like that before. So We need to find a way to hide the ship. We need to find a way to do like a mass invisibility spell. I mean, it, it shrinks That's down. No, no, I mean like when we're flying too, though. Oh, right. Like a cloaking device. That is certainly possible. We should, um... Yeah, I can tell you this. It's a big ship. It ain't gonna be cheap. Yeah. 
Well, we definitely want to pick up some telescopes we while we're in there. paint it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Paint it sky blue. Paint it, like, sky blue with gray flecked in there. Yeah. It's not a bad call. I mean, and we should paint it when it's miniature. So when it gets big, <laughs> we don't have to, like, it'll uh, span the whole thing out so we don't have to buy as much paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Is that the work of Sherman Williams for three and a half years? <laughs> Paint's not cheap. I know that. <laughs> that's, that's very funny. I like that. Yeah. Okay, miniature, um, miniature paints. A painter's too. a painter set is ten white draca. So you could easily do that. Nice. It's a fun <laughs> idea. Um, we'll see how effective it is. Once you. I guess it depends on the weather. And I mean, yeah. could or we could try to hire like a professional somebody to. I mean, I don't know, like, to do it better than we could, I guess. Like, tiny, tiny cloud painting. On, yeah. Yeah, on, like, on like someone that would ship. make a very believable... Yeah. Like just okay. Have... That's something that you can do. That's absolutely something you can do. Uh, but first... The notes. You park the ship, I'm assuming, outside of the city. Shrink it down and take right. it inside. The place to go is our deck city to definitively find someone that can translate this is the University District. Or the Magic District, as it is also called. The Magic District is odd. Um, so you notice as you're walking through it that the, like the sort of outer walls so you are flying up high enough that you can kind of see the interior walls of Sartek City, right? The walls show it as being smaller than it is when you're walking around in it. Ah, oh, nice. So, at least it seems that way. It's, un it's some kind of magical, crazy stuff happening. And there are a bunch of wizard towers in here. There are also buildings, like your sort of standard university type buildings. Um, there are at least <coughs> four or five libraries, um, if not more, that might be shaped differently than you're used to seeing. Um, you see towers of all colors and shapes and sizes, and it's just, it's a lot to take. Um, where would you like to go? In the magic district. I mean, probably like curiosity shop or something like that weird that okay. might have someone that wouldn't be able to identify. It's good to at least start there. And then if yeah, sure, to sure. Um, you find a shop called. Interestingly and blatantly, it is called <coughs> Strange Love's Oddities. Oh. An odd name for a place. An odd name indeed. And the building itself is, uh, it looks like it was shaped from an old gnarled tree uh, that's slightly burnt on the outside. And that wouldn't be so weird as a wizard tower, except for the fact that it's kind of squared off. 
So it's like the bark like bends <laughs> in 90 degrees and makes a sort of uh, rectangular building. Hmm. Very Minecrafty. Very Minecrafty <laughs> looking. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's that's a good that's a good way to put that. The front has great big windows and you can see lots of little um, trinkets you do see. An inordinate amount of different styles of spoons. We have Quetzal. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Interesting idea. Uh, but there are other other trinkets and doodads as well. Uh, you kind of walk in. Just assuming you do. Is everybody going in? By the way. Sure. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, you say that. I mean, you could, in theory, although although you need it painted, like you could leave the ship out somewhere and just to be able to go in. Let to go. <coughs> want to go can go. I will say that the people who are here. Okay. Go. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Easier that way. Yeah. yeah. The front desk or counter is maybe twelve feet wide. And it has, it's like a jeweler's display kind of thing. It's got glass, the top and the sides. It has little, mm. like... It has, we're basically going into a magical pawn shop anyway. Yeah. It has Pokemon cards. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> the latest trading card game. No, it has, like, gems of different sizes and style of cuts. It has... A couple of amulets, a few rings. Um, there's a like a folded cloak in there. Um, there's actually more than one of those, and one of them has like a couple of small spoons attached to them, or like laying on top of them, I should say, kind of a display. And the person you see behind the counter is an elf. And from what you can tell, is a fairly, it's a little hard to tell with elves, but you can tell that this one's a old. Not through necessarily any sort of features other than the eyes. Uh, they've, been al- they've been alive a good long time. And even though their, their bodies and skin and stuff don't show that, you can definitely see it in there. It is, uh, this particular one, this particular elf is clearly a male, has not the sort of standard, like, long hair that's sort of typical of old elves. He keeps it cut short. Kind of like mine, actually. Super short. It's nice. It's good look. His ears stick out, seem to stick out much further. Even though they're not. Sure. It's just kind of the, the nature of that. And he is looking... He, he has a uh, one of the trays from underneath up on top. And he has a sort of monocle that has <coughs> multiple lenses on it. And he's, look, he's inspecting a gem that he has. He kind of looks up and sort of folds it up and says... Hello, uh, Harriet. If you go in, it's a little difficult for you to fit in the store. <laughs> uh, just because you're very tall. You can, if you duck, you can fit through the door. And then the ceilings in here are actually like right at 12 feet. So, like, you can feel the ceiling right against your head. <laughs> Kind of looks around at all of you and says, "Yeah, I see. Uh, there's a there's a snoring dog off off to the side of him too, to account for the that sort of ambient noise." <laughs> um, I see some of you have been spending time in the. Lyran Forest. 
force of zero. How can I help you? We have a written message we would like translated. Do you know anyone who is capable of this? Yes, I do. Me. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Good luck, please. Hand him the notes. Hand him the notes. We'll say the same thing. Seems to say the same thing. We can't read it. There may be some right. nuances that that's, miss. that's fair. An accent here. The the script, because you had time to analyze it if you really wanted to, but the script is the same. It's just a little bit different. <coughs> you know, standard mm-hmm. deviations of, of normal handwriting. And he folds his, his monocle thing down again. Uh, and as he sort of looks at it. He says, uh, I'm strange love, by the way. Who... May I uh, ask your names? Christian, the paladin. Makes sense. And my friends call me Cain. Cain. And you, tall one? (laughs) <laughs> like looks <laughs> up at you. Harriet. Harriet. Thank you. I am Doctor Strange. He sort of pulls out, he sets the, the notes down, he pulls out another <coughs> sort of slip of parchment and a pen, and he starts to sort of transcribe it. And he hands you, uh, in nice, flowy, sort of common speech, it says, it says the following. It says, it says your name on it, somewhere in here at least. It says, Quetzal and Krishna have been seen cavorting with guildies, disobeying direct orders. Destroy all but them and bring them back to us alive for reinstitution. Didn't notice me. (laughs) (laughs) With the guildies? I don't know who talked to the guildies. I talked about the other people on the boat. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, this seems beyond my pay grade. <laughs> uh, and I will say that uh, Gyogi is a bit derogatory. <laughs> Don't care much for that. <coughs> Would you, uh, do you have need of anything? Anything else? What's with all the spoons? Oh, yes. Um, I quite like them. Some of them have properties that are useful. But it's just something I like collecting. That's fair. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. Would you have any thoughts on why a person might want the Triants dead? In the forest. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, well, it rather depends on there are a number of reasons, really. Uh, okay. Trance can go bad, so to speak. It's rare that it happens, but it does happen. They could want access to the area that the trains are protecting for resources or some other reason. They could hate trains. 
could be as simple as that. I, I don't have enough information really to make that analysis, but it could be any number of reasons. <coughs> Could be more than one of those reasons. Okay. We'll pay the man in shekels. Mm -hmm. We'll pay the man for reading the notes. How much do you pay? Just um, a fee. He wasn't like, going to charge you anything. Oh, really? Yeah. It's well, just, well, just trying to get a note. No. I mean, that's, that's like. It's still taking his time. Pass him a white Draka then, just for yeah, his time. Yeah. Like a tip. Thank you. For most shopkeepers, you don't have that, to. that's probably pretty. I'll do it. No big yeah. deal. Yeah, that's that's like that's, that's not really much for him. I have twenty four. But he's like, oh, okay. Well, let's give. Him, uh, well, I'll, I'll give him ten ten white for my supply. I'm investing in the community and building connections. There you go. All right, I'll give him ten too. So we give him twenty total. Yep. All right. You know, it's, it's a, a big chunk of change for. Yeah. It's a big chunk of change for five minutes of work, right. for sure. He, he very graciously takes it. Just thank you. Uh, you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate that you did. I do have, by the way, I specialize in enchanting jewelry uh, and spoons, as far as <laughs> that goes. <laughs> Are there any rings of feather fall? Like Yes, there is. It's, it's called a ring of feather fall. Yeah. Is that like a, an expensive item? Is it a one time? I think it's rare. Uh, I think it's a rare item. Love it. Yeah, I, I don't have the DMG over here just now, but yes, um, ring of feather fall. Is rare requires attunement. When you're falling while wearing this ring, you descend 60 feet per yeah. round and take no damage from falling. Yeah. So it just is always on. It just works. It's just, you don't have to activate it or anything. Yeah, it's you're, you're, just you're playing in no falling damage. What's a rare 4,000 white? Uh, it depends on the item. I will look real quick for you. With an airship, that's a very handy thing to have. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Rare, I would say for that, it wouldn't be the... F so, rare between 501 and 5,000 white Draka. Yeah, it's... Um, for something like that... It's not wondrous or anything. It's, it's not wondrous. It's 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 a good item. Um, but we'll kind of plop that in the middle and say 3,000 for one. Does he have one? In this shop? Or how long would it take him to enchant one? Yeah, those look dope. They have a drawing for it. Oh, nice. Yeah, it is. I would say, um, give me a, certain, a serendipity roll. And we'll see if he does. Most excellent. Roll high enough, he might even have two. Well, these other guys can fend for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> 72. Nice. He does have one, yes. Excellent. I will purchase it. Good sir. Oh. Excellent. And well, he says, I really appreciate that. If there's anything else you need uh, or would like me to make, perhaps, then just let me know and we'll work out the details. Really appreciate it. That's all that uh, I have. Yeah. I don't need anything. Very good. Unless. No, I might say that Quetzal ca uh, came along too. He wants to ask about some of these spoons that this guy's got. Yeah. <laughs> he would have come along though because he would have been curious as well. That's true. Where, where That's true. Going. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of got the worst of it yeah. uh, through that whole encounter. He did. For sure. Um. Well, there are a number of different spoon type enchantments. Um, he kind of shows you a couple of them. Some of them are just like common magic items. Like there's one that uh, when you hold it just so, and so his command word, it like fills up with water. 
Oh, that's, that's, that's actually pretty or, amazing. Or like sugar or salt or whatever. That's a medicine that like, you need. <clears throat> if you're on the desert, so okay, I think that might that would be very intriguing to him. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was actually in, had it in mind asking about like like a spoon that like like always get a uh, like season like had like the exact amount of seasoning that you needed for something. Like, no, yeah, it's like, like it's like it's like, like you, you it's just like, like stir it in. Yeah, it's like get like. Or like you scoop it in, like whatever you scoop out is always exactly the right amount for the dish yeah. you're making. Yeah. Like a ladle. Like a self seasoning ladle. I just Or just, well, you know, the just, seasons are available, you just put it in a particular season though and it, it like makes a, sense like a, what you need. Like a tablespoon of yeah. perfect seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, he has enchanted a few different sizes of spoon that do that. Uh, so there's just like a tablespoon size. That uh, should be for you know, with a bowl of something, stew or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's the sort of bigger ladles. I kind of like the thing that you said, though. I'll just pie. be able to, like, like, command word to to have whatever seasoning or solvent or whatever. Yeah. You... It'd probably be good also for him to get one that would, like, no matter what it is, it tastes good. Well, that's a tricky thing as it is that's a matter of opinion for food, but <laughs> he can cook good. Yeah. He can, yeah. He, he doesn't. He doesn't need a crutch uh, like that. So, makes... Something handy with the have his seasonings on hand everywhere he goes, just by having his his one spoon. Yeah. 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 The teaspoon. Uh, of measuring. When you, when, oh boy. The teaspoon of measuring. <laughs> when you say the command word, it can generate it generates water essentially. So you can like say the command word, command word, command word. It takes a long time, but you could survive off that. Like, yeah. like at a tablespoon. And oh yeah, a little small, a slightly a little bigger. bigger, a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's more really of like a uh, an oddity. It's function. It would be theoretically functional for survival purposes, um, if a little. Tediously annoying to do so, but it's than just getting like it's, all, it's probably a mile for situation. Yeah. No, well, yeah, so it would be useful because as you're stirring, you could say the command word and add just a little bit of water. And it's true. Um, you said it does. You could just get like a decanter of endless water and achieve the same thing as it does. Though. Yeah, well, I have. I no. still have that. You said, but it does like the seasonings and everything too. Uh, no, that that would be a separate spoon. Okay, that's the spoon that Quetzal wants. Okay, the seasoning ones. Yeah. The, oh yeah. That's a that's the totally a common magic item. The like, table the tablespoon of seasoning. Yeah, that's like sixty white draka. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Don't, I dig uh, it. Definitely want that. <laughs> yeah. There are of course. Uh, Other, other options, if you will. Um, those are just sort of common spoons. They're the more valuable ones that you could actually use for like combat. That would function as a just like a bludgeoning weapon, like a mace or something like that. Like a big old uh, spoon. Yeah, and those can have. Sort of your standard weapon type enchantments on it. So like plus one, plus two, plus three. You can have elemental type damage to it. Um, that would be a fun idea. As far as common spoon, he he tends to make a lot of common magic items, uh, just because they're easy to make and they're sort of generally useful. Like. He's gonna sell a lot more of them than he will, like yeah. a very rare. Exactly. Um, there's there are spoons that you can use to increase or decrease the temperature of the substance that you're stirring. Uh, so, like if you're making like, sweet tea, you can use it to cool your tea down, <coughs> or cold tea, or hot tea, prefer it the other way. Uh, sort of like a thermal <laughs> thermal spoon. Well, there's a combat spoon that can kind of make or shed spices. If you bust them in the head, it sheds a bunch of pepper. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a per- percentage chance of blinding him. 
That's in the. I, I'll have to think about that when I work on that one because that sounds hilarious. Five <laughs> uh, yeah. percent chance to blind or something. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, though. That's great. I love that. Um, there aren't real now. There are some kind of ridiculous ones too, like um, mild, mildly cursed ones that'll change your tongue different colors or. Mm. Um, there's a super there's actually one that he keeps in the back like behind the counter in this sort of like super reinforced case it looks like it has like diamonds and stuff on it and it's a it's like it's a legendary spoon that can uh, I want it to do sounds that'd be something crazy you mean uh, so mentally think or like command word and then say uh, like a food uh, like a, or like any like a food of any kind like and that. it automatically appears on there uh, well okay Anything. so well let's let's do this <coughs> it can generate once per day uh no 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 it can't do that because it has to be has to be more of a gap than that. Um, let's see, like once every three days or so, it can generate a hero's feast hmm. without requiring material components. That's amazing. Yeah, considering just, considering just each wave. time you considering that each time you cast that it costs a thousand gold. It's like a Jesus spoon. <laughs> it's just just wait. <laughs> Just, just wave um, it and you can feed it, feed interestingly it, uh, enough, it. Hero's Feast is specifically, it feeds 12 people. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's an interesting coincidence. Hmm. It's a handy, it's, it's definitely, I can see why it's a legendary item. That would be, like, people would ship themselves to get that. Yeah, it is, uh, it, that one's not for sale. But he's uh, really excited about it. Yeah. So he told you all about it. <laughs> it's like, nice. Yeah, take this one out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, maybe one day, if you're feeling the need or want, um, you might be willing to break it out and give you guys a hero piece. Hero's piece. Mm. Nice. Yeah. But it does have, you know, he tells you, uh, do you have, if you want me to do this, I don't mind to do it for you, but you're going to need some kind of payment in return, preferably in spoons, spoon I don't have, hmm. which is not, it's, it would be difficult, but not impossible to do. Well, especially if you had, like, if you knew someone we could go and find it. Well, I don't have any specific spoons. Like, like, like a quest. Oh, there are other really things that you could bring him to, realistically, but like a spoon would basically guarantee it. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you bring him. Nice. He's not really into other color. Hmm. Yeah. Spoon. So don't even think about bringing a fork there, this dude. Well, I say that. He does have a common magic item that can change between spoon, fork, and... Nice. Handy. Yeah. Backpackers love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's all about utilitarian common magic items that are reasonably cheap. And that's how he makes bank. Because that stuff's cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, And your normal person can afford it. Yeah. It well, would take some time, but you could save up and get one for sure. Or a spoon <laughs> just like, you don't have to lift it, it just... Put food in your mouth. <laughs> like an, an animated spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be great. There is one. Great great for lazy people or people yeah. with Parkinson's. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or you people with no arms. arms. Yeah. It happens sometimes too. Yeah, this is also true. It's a dangerous world out there. Yeah. <laughs> no arms, can't afford a spectral one. 
Yeah. That's that's great. These are these are great ideas. I, I love this. <laughs> it's like the Spoon Man, the magic Spoon Man. Yeah, Doctor Strange Love. <clears throat> All about spoons. <coughs> Beneficial spoons. And funny ones like the one that changes your tongue different colors. Yeah. There's some other good cursed spoons. Oh, uh, one that like the, the, the soup just falls right through it. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's a right like, looks like a regular spoon. But yeah. You gotta, as soon as, as soon as like you get like you, yeah. you get like within two it inches of your mouth, it spills all over. Yeah, it, it just like it bends. Yeah. Like it just oh, yeah. like oh, metal just bends and dumps. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. <laughs> like prank spoons. Yeah. Those would be cheaper because you know you want to make those where, like little kids can get them because yeah. they'll have a blast with that. Merchandising. It's all about merchandise. Yeah. Oh man. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. He's thought of a lot of different things for that. Uh, yeah. Spoon that dries your mouth out whenever you put it put it in. Oh, it. Like gives you cotton mouth. Oh, that's like it's like terrible. Just, it's like you. So you get like, like a nice. Like soup or something like that. You put it in your mouth, and your entire it's like desert in there. Like you just ate like <laughs> like a, like a half a, half a sleeve of saltine crackers. <laughs> the one that you can't pull out of your mouth. The trick is you just let it fall, but you don't know that. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you oh, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> like a Chinese finger trap. Uh, <laughs> that's great. <sighs> oh man, these are good. <sighs> <laughs> could spend the rest of the night doing this. <laughs> yeah. Some of those he, like, didn't have. But he makes some notes. And he's right. like, totally makes some. Because that's hilarious. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> you would eventually give up and just drop your hands and then it would fall out. And you would, ah. Yeah. What is this? Your chair okay. is shedding on me. Huh? Chair is shedding on me. Oh. Uh oh. Is that a like the white paint? Oh, oh on the oh, chair. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna have yeah, to peeling. fix that sooner rather than later, yeah, my dear. So. I think that this is a good place. Call it. Call it. Yeah. Call it and look at the spoons. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I will get with Eli and see if that is an option for him. I probably can message him now because he's up. Um, and see if that's feasible. Because if it is great, even if it's not, we're probably still going to try it. Because we'll be able to play for longer with that. I'll be down to try it. I don't prefer it, but if it's advantageous, then... Yeah. How much is that, uh... Is the Roll20, like, the subscription thing per month? Last time I checked, and I haven't checked in some time, but I think, like, the standard, like, DM one is 50 bucks a year. Maybe it's more now. Yeah. Very possible that it's more now. I'll look into it and let everybody know, because we'll need that. Yeah, I was gonna say because I know um, is it, it it lets you do things that you need to be able to do to run a campaign. I've heard that like um, have character sheets for a campaign set up and everything. So I've heard Fantasy Grounds is a good one too. It is. It's actually uh, I really love that one because as the DM you can type like choose the language mm-hmm. and type. Like, say it's Elvish, right? Yeah. Type it in to the chat thing. And if your character speaks and reads Elvish... It'll come up as English. You can read it. That's pretty neat. No one else can. That would I be... Know, I, 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 I do like that idea. Because it's more it's like cool. I know the, I know the it's main, very cool. The main At least difference that's is like that. one of the features that I thought was like super rad. I, have, well, it, like it I know it's a lot more expensive up front. Cause, it is, yeah. Um, but it's a one-time purchase as opposed to a subscription. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that the, um, if I remember looking at it, it's like really only... By the way, real quick, uh, we'll, kind of, we'll just call it here, and uh, we'll see you guys in three weeks, I think. Because I, yes. I got my surgery next yeah. 
Thursday. Next week. And then week after that is uh, our break, technically. And then we'll play after that. So three weeks from now. And that'll give us time to plan and get whatever we're going to use organized for that purpose. Uh, so yeah. Later.